It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Wisdom Wednesday with the wise one, Andrew Brandt, the former Packers executive and longtime agent. Now he's consulting. For Gary Vayner Sports Agency, no one knows more about the business of football, about the legal side of football, quite frankly. We'll get into that with this NIL stuff than the great Andrew Brandt. We are, of course, presented by DraftKings. Love me some DraftKings. Love me their offer for UFC 264. Are you kidding me? 264 to one odds that you get a knockout in the first round. I'm in. Let's do it. Give me that knockout. Why would you not put a dollar in and go for the knockout? Anyway, I love it. I love that on Friday, we will be able to have a spread the word winner via social media at Ross Tucker NFL at Ross Tucker pod. I love those of you that take advantage of any of our sponsors on the sponsors tab over at Ross Tucker.com, especially those of you that are looking to get into the best ball draft with me and Joe Dolan over on the Fantasy Feast. We will record that today, and I will announce a couple more winners on today's Fantasy Feast podcast. So make sure you check that out. And then our YouTube is growing. Our YouTube views are growing. And you get to see me wearing a turquoise. I believe that's what color this is. Turquoise shirt with a different uh, beachy background behind me. So now, that's why you got to go to YouTube or at least check out the highlights on YouTube or at Ross Tucker Pod. Lots of news actually to get to today for the first week of July. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, I talk to him just about every week. We do take some weeks off here and there, which, by the way, is all the more reason to subscribe and listen to the Business of Sports podcast. You did something really cool, Andrew, that I've seen a lot of feedback on. People like that. People like learning more about you and your background. What was the genesis of that episode this week? Morning, Ross. Uh, I liked answering questions that sort of come in a lot to me. You know, it wasn't here's what Joe in, in Seattle sent in. It was just kind of the most common questions. And it's nice to get personal sometimes on the podcast, as you and I sometimes get personal. Uh, So the most popular ones are, you know, what about my routines, fitness and morning routines? I talked about sort of my day and trying to guard my mornings and um, sort of reflective time in the morning and reactive time in the afternoon is kind of what I go for. And then I talked about I answered questions that I always get about getting into the sports business. So many young people want to do that. It's just the way to sort of advise young people as I do all the time. People have questions about being an agent, being a team executive, some stories from Green Bay. It's all in there. So this week's Business of Sports Pod is a really special one, I think, where I get personal and talk about my life stuff more than business stuff. So... I know we've often talked about the different phases of your career and your mm-hmm. life. And it really is fascinating from professional tennis player for a while to the agent business, to NFL Europe, to uh, Packers executive, to now all the media and teaching stuff. Is there, um, I mean, obviously we've talked about your age, you're the world's, Uh, best looking and most in shape 60 year old that I know is there is there a dream job that like if somebody snapped their fingers that you would you would stop what you're doing now and do it's hard to think of you know I do answer that in the podcast too when I go back for team um you know my life is better now (laughs) (laughs) it's a good point right it's a good point like I'm not Yeah, I'm certainly not making the money I made at the Packers, let's be clear. Um, But if you do a job for money, I know young people have to, but if you do a job for money, it ends up costing you at the end. It really does. Um, You know, I think, Ross, my answer is always never say never, but um, it's hard to think of. 
I floated the idea when players came to me two times, as you know, I've shared this with you and the podcast that about considering the role that Demory Smith has, the head of the NFLPA Players Association. Um, and I decided not to do that too, because I think that was more, you know, that would have in the lead up, it would have been tough, you know, it would have been tough dealing with campaigning against an incumbent and factions. And I just didn't want that for my life too. Um, but yeah, what's, what's lucky for me, Ross, is things keep coming up sort of beyond my staples of podcast and column and newsletter and, and my day job at Villanova. You know, I've got an expert witness thing going right now. I've got a consulting thing going right now. So that's where I am. Yeah, I, I can see you being like the head of the NCAA. <laughs> yeah, well, now it's a busy time for that. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, probably was like... That's the thing. Um, those are high stress jobs. So you have to decide that you really, well, you seem like an anti-stress guy, not really a, a high stress guy. Yeah. I mean, again, a lot of thoughts go through when my son's now out of the house, you know, uh, empty nester that I am. So life's a, uh, <laughs> life's an open road for me right now. Speaking of the NCAA, you know, we don't get into NCAA topics that much here because yeah. most of what we do is the NFL. But I feel like there's a lot of spillover with this NIL, which for those of you that are not familiar, it's name, image, and likeness. And college players can, for the first time, make money off of their name, image, and likeness. I guess the first question I have, Andrew, is, Knowing that the NFLPA said that NFLPA agents are allowed to do this, I mean, is it fair to say that if you're an NFL agent and you want to stay in business, you better be in on the NIL and getting after these kids when they're freshmen in college and getting them deals. Otherwise, other people are going to get the relationships and you're going to be out of luck. Is that fair? Yeah, listen, we didn't talk last week, Ross. It's a seminal moment for college athletics. It's not, let's let's be clear, it's not pay for play. So no college athletes are going to be paid by their schools, but they're going to be paid by third-party endorsers. For the first time in the 115-year history of the NCAA, this is going to be allowed. Is this pay for play? No. Does it lead to that eventually? I think so. So this is the biggest crack in amateurism that we've ever had. And as of last week, you and I didn't talk again, but you saw these twins from Fresno State, basketball players, women get some get a deal. You saw the quarterback at Miami get a deal. Now we have a deal with the entire team at Miami to promote some MMA gym, get 6,000 a year for each player. So it's happening. Now, the agent side is something that coaches have to get used to. They've always been taboo around college coaches because they're always trying to take their players to the pros. That's gone. Agents will be around. Now, the guidelines from all the states and the NCAA say that NIL agents shall not be the agents pursuing them for professional sports. Good luck enforcing that. Because as you just said, every NFLPA agent is going to try to get in partly to get NIL income, but I think primarily to get their hooks in for the pros. Now, how are you going to enforce that? Oh, my God, that, that they're sort of not really NIL agents. I just don't see it being enforced. So agents are going to be coming out of the woodwork and already are for the NIL side because everyone wants to be an agent and you can't be an agent walking in to represent pro athletes. You just, there's too many barriers, but you can to represent NIL. If you're in a local market, you're going to do the grunt work and hunt down the furniture store and hunt down the gas station, hunt down everyone to see if they'll give some running back a deal in the college. You can do that now. So I think we'll see a proliferation of agents. Villanova has me to kind of screen the agents, give them advice, look over contracts. I hope that all these schools have someone like that because that's going to be very important. Um, do you think it leads to more kids actually staying in school? I guess I'm thinking about like the three-year starting quarterback 
who's not considered a great draft prospect. I'm thinking like Sam Ellinger from Texas, Ian Book from Notre Dame, where they're kind of like a sixth, seventh round pick and might not even make the team, might be practice squad. I don't know. I mean, if you're the starting quarterback for three or four years at Notre Dame or Texas or some of these schools, you might be able to have a pretty good income. I think it's already happened. You know, we're in the NBA draft time where players can still take their name out. Um, and I think I saw one player did that where he used NIL as the reason. You know, he wasn't going to be a top draft pick maybe next year. I see that, Ross. I also see that. I don't know if Ellinger's the right example, but I see players that are maybe in the past desperate to make, get some money for their family. And they go and they're either undrafted or they're sixth or seventh round picks. That's what I see as the cohort that's really affected by this. So instead of desperately trying to make some money, $50,000 bonus as a seventh round pick, then they can stay and maybe make maybe not 50000 but 20000 in NIL, go the next year, be a fourth or fifth or third round pick. I can see that happening, yes. Yeah, now it's going to be very, very interesting. I, I'm still confused on some of the rules because, number one, it was supposed to not be an enticement to get a kid <laughs> to come to school. But when the MMA gym guy says, I'm giving $6,000 a year to every Miami guy, how is that not an enticement to get the kids to come to school? Yeah, and, I also my, read where, yeah. and I also read, Andrew, where it has to be commensurate with, you know, uh, the value they're providing. Well, not, 80, not all 85 Miami football players are worth that money to, to promote the gym. I mean, the starters are, but these kids that have never played a second, never will, how, how do you say that they're worth the value that they're getting? This is the fair market value thing is really, it's like what I said about NIL agents. Who's going to enforce that? You know, who's going to enforce that? That, Yeah, I mean, who's to say a gym member, a gym's promotion at 6,000 is too much for a backup player? I don't know. And you're absolutely right. What Miami did is the first line of whoever the coach is, I don't even know, in their recruiting pitch to next year. That's it. And I've heard about deals, uh, I can't name the school because it was given to me in confidence. They're going to have uh, the top five football players in their choosing come over to the flagship radio station every week, do a 10-minute segment every week, and get $25,000. And they're going to hold a 50000 spot for the quarterback. So that's recruiting next year. New group. So... It's absolutely going to be used in recruiting, and I don't know how they enforce it. The whole thing, Ross, is the NSA kind of threw up their hands. Based on the Austin case we talked about, based on getting slammed in that decision, you handle it, schools. <laughs> so now the schools are handling it. And I think the only restrictions, as I've seen it, are you can't do tobacco, alcohol, gambling, sex. But pretty much everything else is off limits, and, and, and I don't know how you do valuation. I really don't. Um, coming up, a couple of things I wanted to ask you about. I think I'm contractually obligated to ask you an Aaron Rodgers question every single week. He was in the match last night uh, with the Shambo against Brady and Mickelson. Did well. He made some putts. They won. He was asked whether or not he'll be the quarterback for the Packers opening day. He said, we'll see. I, I guess my initial reaction, Andrew, was if he's so opposed to ever playing for them again, like everybody says, I guess I kind of feel like he wouldn't say, we'll see. I kind of feel like he'd say, no, I'm not. So I read that as, yes, he will, but you know him better than I do. Yeah, thanks for <laughs> Rogers. I mean, he's on, yeah, I watched last night a little bit of it. Um, I saw that part. You know, to me, it's always been the same since day one. Um, the Packers aren't trading him, and he can't trade himself. So life is about options, and he's got two options, play or don't play. And I think he'll play. I think he'll play. 
and that means he'll play for the Packers because there are no other options if he wants to play. I think he'll play somewhere else in 2022. But this is where we are, and I guess my if you had to ask me, Ross, I just think he'll make some noise at training camp, of, and there'll be some kind of acquiescence by the Packers. I don't know if that's financial, if that's adjusting his contract next year so it's easier to get out, but I think something will happen where they, they kiss and make up because he's not going to retire. <laughs> he's, you know, it's not going to happen. So that's how I see it. So uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you about I thought was interesting, there were no opt-outs. Yeah. No, no opt-outs, Andrew, which – I guess I'm a little surprised just in the sense that if you are someone that's considered high risk, you get 350 grand locked in. You don't have to pay it back. I don't know if you're a guy that is on the bubble, I don't know, 350 to make sure you get you get 350, you don't have to make the team. I don't know. I, I guess I thought a guy or two would would consider that. Yeah. I guess I'm not surprised. I mean, no one, everyone wants to play, you know, the whole Aaron Rodgers thing, like what you, you know, they, they live to play. Um, we still don't know the answer to this the vaccination thing, Ross, which is really, I mean, are these guys going to be kept out of their rooms during meetings that choose not to get vaccinated? You know, like I saw Sam Darnold, Kirk Cousins refused to answer the questions. Does that mean if they're not, Kirk Cousins can't go in the meeting room with the Minnesota Vikings quarterbacks. That's, that's something I, you know, we have to find out because uh, that's going to be a competitive disadvantage. I would think. The, uh, the last two things I want to get to you with you are both contract things. Trevor Lawrence signed his contract, $36 million fully guaranteed over the next four years. But man, if he stinks, that's a lot of money. If he's good, boy, is that a deal. I mean, that's less than what guys make. That's a lot less than what guys make per year now at that position. <laughs> Go back 11 years, you know, the um, the redoing of rookie contracts by the NFL and NFLPA. In, and all the coverage I did about the CBA, that's the one thing that was easiestly, easiest to agree on because the owners are embarrassed by those big deals and the veteran players didn't want these rookies making what they made. So the Sam Bradfords and Jamarcus Russells of the world will be no longer, and here we are. So I pointed out on Twitter, as a lot of people have, Sam Bradford's $78 million as a rookie, Trevor Lawrence $36 million as a rookie, and we're 11 years later. So, yeah, nine a year. Nine a year for a starting quarterback is peanuts. Um, it's where we are. I mean, obviously, they're going to readjust it if he's a good player after year three. But, you know, on that front, Ross, diverting a little bit, we have not seen extensions yet for that group. Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, um, Baker Mayfield. So, you know, that's something to watch before training camp. Are those guys going to get deals? Or they are teams cowed by the golf and Wentz situations and want to wait another year. That's something we're going to watch. Next week as well is the franchise tag deadline. We'll probably talk about it next week because it's, it's eight days from today. So a week from the day when we usually talk on Wednesdays will be the day before it. It's a weird year for the franchise tag, Andrew, with the cap coming down. Yeah, I mean, deadline spur action, as you know, and we'll see if there are any deals made. But <laughs> this is a tough year. You know, the cap is down uh, big time, and I think teams may hold their powder, you know, and do this what I call rent, date, date rather than marry these players. So that's where we are. You know, the franchise, I think like a lot of things, you know, June 1 releases, you know, as, as we progress with the cap and everything else, it, teams just don't do those things as much. Um, it's going to be an interesting time in the NFL right now. Players are off, but the business is going to heat up. Check him out on social media, always at Andrew Brandt. That's how you get everything Andrew Brandt content. 
You also need to sign up for the Sunday 7, the newsletter that's growing by leaps and bounds every week. Andrew tweets out that link that you can check it out. Awesome stuff that he does. What a great idea for people to have some awesome Sunday morning reading. A lot of people don't get the Sunday paper anymore. Now they just get the Sunday Andy Brand <laughs> newsletter, you. which is awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks, Ross. Thank you also, Warby Parker. New sponsor alert. Get excited. I am, you know why? I am not good at picking out glasses, especially for me, sunglasses. I'm just not. So Warby Parker, thank you. Because I don't love going to one of those stores where it's so expensive and whatever. Warby Parker has this home try-on kit. It is perfect. My wife and I went through and we looked at the five I wanted to try on. They send them to you. They send them right to you. And then while we were standing there, I tried on all five and we decided, boom, Barkley wide. Like Charles Barkley, that's the one we like the best. Because it's hard to pick them off the internet unless you actually try them on and see how they look on your head. And I got a big dome. Love the home try on kit. Love that I was able to pick up a couple of Barkley sunglasses, Barkley wide for the rest of the summer because I actually just broke a pair of my old sunglasses. So thank you, Warby Parker. You should try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days, no obligation to buy, ships free, and includes a prepaid return shipping label. Try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash Ross. And I'll tell you guys right now, the first Warby Parker try on that someone does and emails me today, you're in the best ball draft with me and Joe Dolan. Boom. That easy. Warbyparker.com slash Ross. Just sign up for the free try at home kit. Email forward it to me, Ross at Ross.com. You're in the best ball draft. Tux Takes. Morning, Ross. Let's start with some quarterback news. As you and Andrew just talked about, Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones signed their rookie contracts. And Aaron Rodgers said that we're just going to have to wait and see whether or not he is the Packers opening day quarterback. Right. So first of all, for Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones, we talked about Trevor Lawrence, Andrew and I did. You know, Trevor Lawrence is very cost effective as we discussed, but Mac Jones is really cost effective. That's what jumped out to me. I mean, the number one pick, yeah, but you get a guy later than that, Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson, wow. Those guys are an absolute gold mine if they end up being a good player. And I already said what I thought, Bri, about Rodgers. He's playing for the Packers game one. Put, put, put it down. I would be stunned if Aaron Rodgers, I think he would be much more hardlining it. And no, I'm not playing for the Packers. I'm done with them. If there was a chance, he wouldn't play for them. He's he's being way too out. We'll just have to see. I don't know. Yeah, he's playing for them. Tux takes. In other news, Niners released linebacker Nate Jerry, Patriots wide receiver Nikhil Harry, formally asked for a trade, and the NFL, no COVID opt-outs for the 2021 season. Right. So Nate Gary, man, I, I don't know what happened there. He, you know, a year ago, the Eagles felt pretty good about him, and he was their best linebacker. Now he can't even get to training camp with the 49ers. Not a good look for Nate Gary. As for Nikhil Harry, I'm going to ask Greg Cosell about him on Friday's Ross Tucker Football Podcast because I'm I'm curious, or tomorrow, I don't know if we're going to do it tomorrow or Friday yet, but I'm just curious about what, uh, what Greg thinks about him. I, I can tell you right now, he's got guaranteed salaries for the next two years. I'm sure the Patriots want to trade him. I'm sure they – I mean, that's why they went out and got Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne I bet you they'd be happy to trade him. And as for the no cop COVID opt-outs, we kind of already talked about that. I'm a little bit surprised uh, by that. I thought maybe a, a couple of guys that are deemed high risk would take the 350 to not 
have to play football, beat up their bodies this year. Tuck takes. Last two items include the uh, United States Defense Secretary allowing Navy cornerback Cameron Kinley to go to Bucks training camp and the East West Shrine game making some big moves, which you and Emery talked about yesterday on the College Draft podcast. Right. So happy for Cameron Kinley that he gets this opportunity. Um, you know, to be the class president at Navy as a football player is very impressive. You guys know how I feel about any member of our armed forces. So thank you, Cameron, for your eventual service and good luck with the Bucks. East West Shrine game. I think get a little bit more info on this, Bri. It looks like their practices will be Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Then, you know, those will be the three main practices. So that all the scouts can then fly to Mobile from there Monday night and then be in at the Senior Bowl for their practices Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's going to be a heck of a week for those guys, but I think they'll be able to do it. And I think one of you is going to get announced as another contestant for the best ball draft. All you have to do is do the home, the free home try-on kit for Warby Parker. I'm not even asking you to spend money at all. Just do the free home try-on kit. Why would you not? And then the first one I get, you are in the best ball draft. Let's do an email, Brian. Ever wanted to ask an NFL player a question? Well, here's your chance. It's time to ask Ross. The email address, ross at rosstucker.com. I absolutely love your emails. I love anytime we get a chance to read and respond to your emails. If you ever rate and review the show, that counts. Take advantage of any sponsors, that counts. Become a patron, that counts. And then send me an email, ross at rosstucker.com. What do you got, Brian? Hey, Ross, been a fan of yours since uh, you were back on SiriusXM. I would love when you and Booger would argue a topic, a player, or a team decision. I'm a Raider fan since I saw Bo Jackson play. Love the team ever since. Colton Miller, the first Raider, first round draft pick to sign a second contract with the team since Darren McFadden. Now, I'm no expert, but that seems pretty terrible. As of right now, I'm not sure if I see another Gruden draft pick signing a second contract. Maybe the exception of Josh Jacobs. Uh, that's only if he can stay healthy. And I'd love to hear your take on this. Uh, secondly, my daughter Sammy uh, plays for Coach Kelly's Green Goblins in Paxtonia. The Pink Puppies. I have no idea what I'm reading here, by the way. The Pink Puppies played really well last night against us, and I'm planning on being a head coach next year. Any advice you can pass along for a potential rookie head coach? Uh, and finally, Ross, if you can give my best friend, Dennis Sarakinis, a shout out. He loves your show as well. He lives in New Jersey and we haven't seen each other in two years. Thank you very much. That is from Matt Brindley. Shout out, Dennis Sarakinis. By the way, if he lives in New Jersey, Matt, and he's your best friend, make it happen. Life's too short. Meet in Philly, meet in Allentown. I don't know. Make it happen. Life's too short to not see. I, I Look, I get it. There are periods where I go a couple years without seeing my best friends. But make it happen, Matt and Dennis. That's number one. Number two, advice for a potential rookie head coach. Yes. I would say try to get an assistant coach that has some experience. That would be ideal. And I would also say your number one goal is to make sure the girls have fun and want to play again the next year. That's your number one goal is to foster a joy for the sport, in my mind. That's your number one objective. At least it is for me. By the way, Matt, and this goes for anybody. If you guys are a fan or a listener and we're at the same place, Please come say hi. You know, I've, I've been spending a lot of time at the beach this summer on a lot of the weekends. Not all of them, but a lot of the weekends. And I've had people come up to me, and I, I, I love that. I think it's great. You know, I don't get a chance to meet very many fans. So I think it's awesome. Don't do what a guy did the other night where you just come up behind me and take a couple, like, stalker pictures, like paparazzi. We were at the uh, – we were at the ice cream place and some guy, I didn't even see it, but my wife and 
uh, uh, one of the young ladies that was with us said some guy came up and just was like taking pictures of me from behind. First of all, my bald spot's behind me, so don't take pictures of me from behind. Secondly, just say hi. Let's do a picture together. It's way better than whatever that was. Um, so please, if you see me, say hello. I'm a friendly guy, I promise. And it's funny, Matt, because I literally talked about your question with Emery on yesterday's college draft podcast because we went through the 2018 draft and we were talking about the fact that Colt Miller has gotten better. I don't know if he's great, but he's gotten better. And I, I mentioned to Emery your email about him being the first one to get a second contract since McFadden. That is terrible. It's awful, in fact. And they've not drafted well at all. And even I thought uh, you guys should check out yesterday's Even Money podcast because Eric Eager from PFF actually likes the over for the Raiders' win total. But he said he thinks that Gruden's a great coach and a terrible grocery shopper, which sounds about right to me. Definitely check that out. Shout-outs to Pizza Boy Brewing, Sportaculture, Vision Comics with an X, and HumanHeadNYC.com. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feast, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always. Sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit. 